G'day guys, Matt here from Bailey's Diesel Group. I actually wanted to go over some diesel combustion theory with you guys today and actually then explain the diesel performance chips and the variance in these things and, and how that all interrelates to one another. So first things first, in order to understand diesel combustion, you need to understand the elements that make it up. And essentially diesel is much more, much more simpler than, than any petrol or anything along those lines because we don't have to target set AFRs. Um, we do have a maximum air fuel ratio that we can get to, but we don't actually have to target a set AFR all the way throughout the range. We don't have to worry about things like ignition timing and things like that, although it does play a part. So let's get on with it. Essentially, the thing that you guys need to understand about diesel combustion is the only things that come into play are air, fuel, and compression. That's it. Very, very similar. Very, very simple, sorry. Air and fuel are our ingredients. Compression provides the heat which acts as the catalyst to get the whole chemical reaction process taking place. Now, when we talk about the fuel and how we get the two to interrelate, we actually inject the fuel inside the cylinder. Now, many of the older injection systems, people, you would hear people say, oh, the air fuel ratio, the best we can get out of this thing is about 18 to one. The actual stoichiometric ratio as in the ideal air fuel ratio of diesel is actually the same as petrol or close enough makes no difference which is around the 14 and a half to one parts of air to one part of diesel fuel now the reason why we can't get that in reality is that when we put the fuel inside the cylinder here's our little nozzle needle tip when we inject the fuel we inject the fuel in a spray pattern like this so here, obviously, we can see we've got an eight-hole nozzle. I can keep going if you like. But essentially, that's how we put the fuel inside the cylinder. But it means we have all this dead area out here. So this is why, in theory, we know 14 and a half to one air fuel ratio. But in practice, in, in actual reality, we know that it's around about 16 to 18 to one. Common rail is very different because common rail, we can various stage burn it and things like that. So it is a little bit different in that case. But this is what we're talking about when we talk about why they could never do it before. The next part that you guys actually have to be aware of is the particle size of fuel. So when we talk about, let's stay, stick with the 14 and a half to one. 14 and a half to one is the ratio of air to fuel. Now, when we inject the fuel, we actually spray it like a mist inside the cylinder. So for ease of reference, we're gonna say that each little particle of fuel or glob of fuel is traveling through the air in a spherical type shape. So we've got our sphere here. And that's how the fuel, obviously magnified on a massive scale, but that's how the fuel is injected inside the cylinder. So when we think about how this is going to burn, two things must happen, right? First, we've got our volume of fuel. So the volume of the fuel is our to one part of the equation because the volume is obviously what we need to deal with. Then we've got the next part of the equation, which is the air component. So the air component has to be at least 14.5 in order for this one volume of fuel to burn off as good as it can. Where do the two relate because obviously we can only have a, a, a chemical reaction take place where these two surfaces or these two substances meet. Where the two substances meet is obviously on the surface, I just bloody gave it away. But so essentially the 14.5 has to be the surface and the one has to be the volume of the spherical glob of fuel. So when we actually break it down, I don't want to bore the living crap out of you, but essentially the the ratio, when we talk about the surface area of a sphere, it's four over, or four times pi r squared, I think like that anyway, you'll have to double check. But anyway, the moral of the story is, the surface area is given by a number which is r squared. The volume is given by r cubed. So if we talk about the radius as being, when we start talking about a small number, as being 0.1. We've got 0.1 times 0.1, which gives us 0.01. But if the radius 
is 0 0.1. So we've got whatever the calculation is to this, then we've got r cubed over here. We've got 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1. It's actually, so this is taking 1%, but this is actually going to take 0.1 of a percent. So as you can see, essentially the moral of the story is the smaller the particle is, the bigger the surface area to volume ratio, and therefore the bigger the air to fuel ratio is for that particle of fuel, which means it's going to burn off as complete as it possibly can and as fast as it possibly can. The next thing about the particle of fuel, obviously the, part the smaller the particle of fuel is, the less thermal mass that it has. Now, like I said, compression provides the heat in order to start the process off. So essentially the volume of fuel, that little particle of fuel, has to absorb enough heat for it to get to the flash point for it to burn off. There's two things at play here. Obviously, the bigger the surface area to volume ratio is, which as we just covered happens at a smaller particle, means there's more surface area for that one particle or that one volume of fuel to actually absorb the heat. So that's one thing. The next thing is, the smaller it is, the less thermal mass it has, the actual less mass it has, and therefore it can absorb the heat faster again. So the smaller the particle size, A, the better combustion we get. And the reason why that is, is twofold. One, we can actually burn it off far more completely, far more faster. And the other thing is it can actually absorb the heat so we have a much, much shorter ignition delay time. 